What's going on everyone? My name is Dan Hoppel. This is RKO the Mike Reacts and today we are watching Season 1, Episode 2 of The Wheel of Time. Uh, I gotta be honest, since I watched the first episode, this has been bouncing around in my head non-stop. I'm so excited. The more I think about it, the more I can't wait to see where this goes. Um, I have a lot of thoughts uh that I didn't really get to in the first one. Uh, I, I really need to start writing notes when I'm doing this <laughs> to keep track of everything I want to discuss. Um, so I'm not going to talk about a ton right now. Uh, where we last left off, uh, Rand, Perrin, Egwene, Egwene, and Matt left with uh, Lan and Moiraine to go to the White Tower to make sure they could protect their village by drawing the Trollocs away. I'm very excited to see uh, how that chase goes. Um, I don't, again, since you guys have already seen this episode, I, I'm assuming, I don't think this is going to be spoilers. Um, I'm interested to see how they portray it on screen, because in the books I remember, a lot of people compare these books to Lord of the Rings, and I think that's a really unfair comparison, because... Like, the first book has a little bit that's similar to it, but then breaks away completely. The part of it that's similar to it is a lot of the traveling early on reminded me of the Fellowship traveling early on. Um, so I'm interested to see how the early part of their journey uh, to the White Tower, assuming they make it, uh, is portrayed on screen. Uh I also want to, um, we have a couple of viewer comments I want to uh, go over real quick. Uh, first, from uh, Britta, by the way, love your name, big community fan, so I've always thought the name Britta is so pretty. Um, also, you better pronounce it Bagel instead of Bagel. Uh, uh, Britta said, love the books and they give me one type of, of adventure. Love the TV series based on the books since it gives me another type of great experience of the Wheel of Time. I think they've done the magic amazingly well. It doesn't look cheap. Uh, I Yeah, I love the way they are portraying the visual representation of the One Power. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I'm interested to see how they're going to portray it when we eventually, I'm sure we're going to see a man channel at some point since, you know, the whole point of this is hunt, you know, we know there's a group of people hunting down men who could channel. So we know we're going to see a man channel at some point, even if you haven't read the books, I'm sure you could guess that. Um, I'm very interested to see how they're going to portray that, if it's going to look uh, the same, if it's going to look different. I'm really interested to see how they're going to portray that. I wonder if it's going to look the same, if it's going to look different. Um... Because as we know, I don't want to, alright, I can't get too much into it, uh, but it's not just the fact that in this, in the first episode, uh, I think it was Leandrin, the red, uh, the, the red Aja who, uh, or the red sister who, uh, caught that guy at the beginning. I think that was Leandrin. Early on, she says to the to the man she's chasing at the beginning of the show, uh, when you touch it, you make it filthy. That's not exactly correct. But I can't totally jump into it without spoiling things. So I'm interested to see if they're going to deviate from... I don't think they're going to deviate from the books. I think that was just a shorthand way for them to get a new audience in very quickly to it. But it's it's not that a man touching it taints it. But it's it's close to that. And I'm sure they're going to explore it at some point. But yeah, Britta couldn't agree more. I'm very excited to see where they go, especially how they portray the magic moving forward. Uh, Narishma. Thanks for the reaction. Looking forward to see how you feel about the next one. I think the changes they've made are big, but can make sense for character arcs in an adaptation. Hope you continue to enjoy it. Uh, Narishma, first and foremost, I hope you continue to enjoy it too. Secondly, yeah, I uh, like I talked about in the first video, um, you can't expect a perfect one-to-one -one copy from a book to a movie or a book to a TV show ever. And you shouldn't. That would be horrible. And, like, honestly, I think... Listen, I'm almost 40 years old. 
I had to learn this lesson painfully many years ago after watching a lot of books that I loved be made into movies that I didn't think were as good. But the truth is some of them aren't better or worse. They're just different interpretations of the same story. Uh, and my biggest thing is as long as they stay true to the nature of the story and to the characters in the story, to the main characters in the story at least, um, it doesn't bother me as much, uh, especially if it's entertaining. Also, I don't... Guys, do we really want to see a perfect adaptation of a story we've already read? And by perfect, I mean a, a same adaptation. Like, if it's literally just people acting out the book, page by page, that wouldn't be enjoyable for anybody. Believe me. Believe me. Um, it's fun to see people who love the stories that we love interpreted in their ways. Um, so all I'm saying is, anybody who's on the fence about this, give it a chance. Uh, and also, just in general, you, you have to learn to, to not let your heart get too attached to books when they're made into movies, because there are always going to be changes. Um, I remember when the third Harry Potter movie was coming out, and they announced long before it came out that there wasn't going to be a, uh, that Oliver Wood wasn't going to be in it. If you've ever read the third Harry Potter book, a major story point is the uh, the Gryffindors chasing the the cup, the, the Quidditch cup at school. I was 19, 20 years old when that movie came out, and I freaked out. Because I was like, this is so different, and how much are they going to change? And then when I left the theater after seeing it for the first time, I hated it. It took me like maybe three months to turn around on that movie, and now it's one of my favorite of the Harry Potter movies. Specifically because the stuff they cut out didn't matter. The story they told was true to the story in the books. It was a different telling of it, but it was true to it. Um... And things like the Quidditch Cup didn't matter because the main story they were telling was Harry and Sirius Black and Lupin and all that stuff. And it worked. It worked for that sto for that interpretation. Um, so again, I, 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 think that, uh, I think that they're doing a very good job, at least they have in the first episode, of adapting this huge world into a very beautiful... Uh, and somewhat concise, and if you don't, and I know it, that there's a lot of information dumped in the first episode, but believe me, it's nothing compared to this. Trust me. And I'm saying that as somebody who loves the books. Uh, Narishma, thank you again so much for the comment. I hope you continue to enjoy the show as well, and I hope you continue to enjoy the reactions. Um... Christine, love your take on this. I, too, have waited a long time to see this on the screen, and I thought I wouldn't, as it seemed to my mind uh, too large of a world and lots of complicated ideas to translate to the screen. I, too, am waiting to see where the series goes. Yeah, again, uh, Christine, thank you for the comment. I agree. I, I, I think that, you know, with how large the story is, there's, you know, there's definitely different ways they could tell it, and I'm interested to see where they deviate, where they don't deviate, what's changed and what's the same, what characters take on different... At, like, and again, not to use Harry Potter as a, as a reference, but... Um, oh, shit. There's a line er, in one of the movies uh, about saying the name Voldemort, and Hermione says something like, fear of... I, the line is pretty... like It's a famous Potter quote. Fear of a name only increases... Uh, fear of the thing itself or fear of the person itself or something like that. That's not a Hermione quote in the books. That's a Dumbledore quote. I think, like, again, should it have come from Dumbledore? Maybe, but in the story they were telling in the movies, it worked perfectly coming from her in that scene, in that context. Um, so again, I'm I'm definitely not going to immediately gut react to something that's changed, the, unless it's Perrin's wife, because that was fucking weird. But I'm not going to immediately gut react to something that's changed unless it's really crazy. Um, one more comment to go over, and I have to be really careful with this one. Um, because it's a childhood friend of mine who's also read the books. So he and I basically had a little back and forth talking about it in depth, including stuff about the future. And 
so I don't I can't read like ninety five percent of his comment. Uh, but Chris S from DHS uh, said to me, uh, uh, "Well, I did mention in my in my reaction that Matt's family." seemed a little weird because i don't remember them having any family issues uh he mentioned uh matt's family life really bothered me i saw less of a reason for that really as opposed to Perrin having a wife uh i agree with him i think the Perrin having a wife thing was to get over a lot of complicated emotions that are told through a lot of inner monologue so I'm still not totally sold on it, but I'm, again, I'm going to wait to see how they treat Perrin moving forward to really make a judgment call on it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Rosamund Pike was absolutely perfect casting. She is Moiraine. Dude, could not agree more. <laughs> I loved rosamund pike in the first episode i loved also i i looked at a list of the actors names because i don't know any of them um really i think daniel henny is the gentleman who plays uh lan 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 i'm not sure how to say his name i always thought it was lan but i think i'm wrong now i'll correct it in the uh, listen if if daniel henny plays somebody else i'll i'll fix it you'll see a text bubble pop up or something is there anything popping up I don't know. We're not, that's in the future. I'm not there yet. Um, those two are by far, like far and away, I, I, are magnetic personalities on screen. I cannot wait to see where they go, how their relationship with the two Rivers kids grows. The show is definitely doing its own thing here, but I'm mostly on board. I really like the Trollocs. They aren't CGI masterpieces, but done very well on what is not a blockbuster movie budget. The fade was really cool as well. Yo, yeah, for sure. Um, I really liked the fade. Uh, I mean, I, I think did, I think we only saw him once in the first episode, really, right? Um, all I remember was the like the the cowl covering like where his eyes should be. Wonder if that'll come up later. <laughs> Uh, in the books, I, one thing, one of those, descri listen, Jordan could go on and on and on, but one thing he was good at was describing things, uh, sometimes in too much detail, but the one thing that always stood out in my mind about Trollocs was that they don't all look uniform. They, some of them have features of, of maybe birds of prey or of, of cattle or of uh other wild animals so they, they don't all just look exactly the same some have hooves for feet some have i don't remember if any had claws or talons for feet but like they they weren't a uniform look they were all just vaguely similar um i loved how the trollocs looked i thought it was really cool um I went back and watched the scene where the One Power tore apart the One Trolloc when Moraine did that uh, during the battle in the Two Rivers. And that was the only one where I visibly noticed CGI looking a little wonky. The way he tore apart part almost looked a little weird. But then again, the One Power is its own type of magic. So there's no, there is no reason why it has to look like something that's technically believable because it's not and i'd actually like to see them develop their own visual language language i think that's something very smart that uh things like the like the marvel movies have their own visual language if you see somebody use a certain type of magic you could tell if it's somebody who's like a wizard like dr strange or if it's wanda doing chaos magic or if it's not magic if it's nanotech you can tell by the visual language how they make things appear i hope and i think that the wheel of time is going to continue to do that on the show it seems to be putting a ton into production value so i'm really looking forward to see where that goes um i thought it would be cool to be able to pick out the specific 
flows of the one power. Um, I'm not going to break that, uh, what else he said down yet, because I'm sure they're going to get into it in the books. Yeah, that, uh, Chris, I had that thought too. Um, I think for right now, they're probably going to, it almost looked like the, the one power could, man, it, they're using the one power itself to manipulate each aspect. I don't want to say what they really are. You, you and I know what we're talking about and anybody who's read the books, um, but yeah, I th I think that I, I like I and I think I said earlier in this video, um, I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they portray a man channeling. I think it'll be really cool. Here is episode two of season one of the Wheel of Time. Shadows waiting. Let's do it. God, these landscape shots are gorgeous. I cannot get over how pretty the show is. Who? What is going on? Oh, he killed. That's an Aes Sedai? Oh, they're the White Cloaks! Oh, shit! Oh, shoot. Oh, I completely forgot about these motherfuckers. That's fucked up, man. Oh, God, that's awful. That's horrible. That's... That's a really cool shot. That is a really cool shot of a horrible scene. I like how some of them, like, run like humans and some run like animals. That's a really cool touch. So they're already at Terran Ferry. Uh, fun fact from the books. The travel from Emmons Field to Terran Ferry is like, I don't know, 20, 30, 295 pages. I can't remember. Point is, it goes on a long time. I'm not going to complain about brevity in this. Although, I feel like Terran Ferry was like a whole town. So, but this has to be that. Guys, you're not that far away from the shore yet. Maybe go a little bit faster. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but like, there's like a hundred of them over there. Maybe throw a spear or a sword or something at them, or one of your torches they were like 20 feet away and you're just like well I guess we lost alright I know you don't want to go in water but you, for Christ's sake you could do something <laughs> oh Voldemort I'm so, it's just Voldemort yes <laughs> Oh, that looks sick. I love the skull, like the skull-shaped armor on the horses, uh, on the horse too. That's really cool. I know you could use magic, but you could also just tap her on the shoulder. The three oaths are a very big part of Aes Sedai society, and I'm very glad they're diving into it right away. I know I said in the last 
one that he looks a little like Hayden Christensen, Christensen. He better not start acting like Anakin Skywalker or I'm going to be real pissed real fast. I mean, Rand definitely had reservations, but he wasn't just a mopey little bastard. Oh shit, was he? Well, he can't have been poisoned. He would have. Wouldn't he be like Rand's dad? Jesus. Dude, half your hand is in your mouth. What the fuck? Oh, hell no. Whoa. Oh, it was a dream. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. I wonder if they're going to have recurring dr Oh, what the fuck? He actually did puke up a bat? How many? Oh, they all did. They all did. Okay. Dude, chill the fuck out. Who, all of you? What did he say? Shots. Did they have different bat-related dreams? Or did they all puke up bats? I'm very... I'm... Where are we going? East. East. What does a man do at the White Tower? Not get, not get disemboweled by Trollocs, maybe. I don't know if you know this, Rand, but if it wasn't for your dad, that thing would have eaten you. Never thought Matt would be the one telling Rand not to be an ass, but he's a hundred percent right. Also, I, I kind of get why they're. I'm starting to warm up to Rand's behavior because I think I, I think it's probably just a quicker way of expositing uh, Moraine's motivations. Not every white cloak is. Uh... Dude, what are you doing? You fucking creeper. Not every white cloak is has like the Slytherin effect where every single one is inherently the worst human being ever, but I really don't like this motherfucker at all. So, you know those people, the Aes Sedai, that we hunt down for sport? You need to go find one to save your life, but also they're evil, but also go find one to save you. Fuck the white cloaks, man. The same Minethrin? It's good to remember Minethrin. It's just a song. No idea who Minethrin is, anyway. It's your home, bitch. In the old tongue, Minethrin means mountain home. Okay. Used to be the name of the place you now call the Two Rivers. But on the third night, no help had come. So they fought on alone. Six days, and nine, and on the tenth day they knew. They knew no help was coming. She and I said I are a gleam, and man, because she could tell a fucking story. I could listen to Rosamund Pike tell stories all day, every day. <laughs> Hello. 
love this. I love this so much. Yo, we're starting this already. Yo. I didn't want to get into it too much in the first video because of all the shit that went down, but Perrin is one of my favorite characters, and this is a big part of the beginning of it. Is that? Oh my God! Are they going to? Sh uh, uh, what the fuck is it? Shader, Shader Logoth? Are they already there? I thought it would happen this season, but I don't think it would happen twenty minutes later. All these tight, narrow, twisting streets and alleys. Even in the middle of the daytime being like half dark. This is exactly how I imagined it. Oh, A plus, guys. A plus. This is beautiful. Oh, I really can't wait to see it at night. Maybe when the m mighty warrior and strong ass witch tell you that this place is more or less haunted I don't, know. don't go for a leisurely fucking stroll through it god damn that is so gorgeous She didn't make weapons, she only made tools. Somebody made a comment to me who's read the books about why Layla was included, and that line made me feel a lot better about her inclusion. Is it me or is Matt the one acting the If you had asked me by episode two who's which of the three boys was going to be acting the most sane... Matt would not have been my answer. <laughs> Just by saying, I mean, like, not a doofus. I don't mean, like, Matt. I could tell you, this is how I know Perrin was cast perfectly, because every time I read the books, my first thought would always be, God, I just want to give him a fucking hug. He just seems like a big burly teddy bear. And this guy's nailing it. I have a fairly good idea of where this little jaunt is going to end up. Please be anything but that. Please be anything but that. Please be anything but fuck. Oh god, I really like how it looks though. Ruby hilted dagger. Holy f And somewhere on a planet far away, Thanos smiled. Ready for what are you where are you jumping? Oh, there's water. I was I, I didn't see the water. I was like, are Are you just committing suicide? Is that it? Like, well, guess we're done. Shouldn't have run into a building. Yeah. 
you know, it really shows you how, as, as how, oh, fuck. Yo, ho, ho, that is back. I'm oh, sorry, that was really loud. So what I was going to say before that amazing last second was, uh, it, for, okay, all right, let's, let's try to, I think we might have to work backwards from the end back to the beginning of episode two. Um, it really shows you as Hell a good fighter as Lan is. Without Moraine, Moraine, if she's incapacitated in any way, they are fucked. Which shows you just how strong she is and just how much she matters to this group. That's I love that. I remember in the because I'm, I'm rereading the books now. I know Nynaeve actually helps take care of Rand's father. Uh, so she definitely survived in the books the the attack on Emmons Field or on the two rivers. So I was really surprised to see her die in the first episode. I figured she wasn't, but that was a really cool, that was a great way to bring her back. Also, I think in the book she does sneak up on land or tracks him, and they make a big deal out of it because you know he's like such a good he's so good at being undetected. Um, but you know, she grew up in the two rivers. She knows she yo. It's one thing I really like about their depiction of uh, the two rivers people and people in general is that uh, the women especially don't come off as meek or damsels in distress. Like they're in they're on the same level, if not higher, than the dudes. And nobody encompasses that. Uh, aside from Moiraine, nobody encompasses that more than Nynaeve. Um, Nynaeve is actually one of those characters that, as a kid, you know, when I say kid, I mean 19, 20 years old, I wasn't a huge fan of her. As I got older, I really started appreciating the character more and more as I re reread the books more. Uh, I think just because I matured more and realized that, you know, a lot of her actions, at least in the book, are very much, uh, they didn't really show it a ton in the first episode, but, like, the wisdom truly is, like, one of the community leaders, and even though Nynaeve is very young, she really is a leader, even though, the you know, a lot of the guys in the, what is it, there's the women's circle and then the men's council or something, I don't know, there's the women's circle and the men's like council or town council or I don't remember, um, but like she she is a, a force that even older women and men you know defer to. So I was I'm, I really am glad that she's back this quickly because if we had to go a while without seeing her, I was going to be pissed. Oh God, Shadar Logoth. God, I hope I said that right. I only heard them say it like once or twice. I always wanted it to feel very claustrophobic. And I feel like it felt so... Even before the black goo jizz, whatever the fuck it was, started coming after everybody. It looked so like I thought it would. Because even though when they went in there, it was still light out, it still had that menacing, foreboding, abandoned, kind of decrepit look. Um, I'm really interested to know, I feel like those streets that they were walking through were, were practical and practically built sets. And if they were, yo, mad props to the production team because that looked beautiful. Um, in a very horrific way, of course, but it, it was awesome. Um, did not expect to see a horse melt. Uh, melt's not the right word. Uh, get smoked. <laughs> Rand was very bitchy in this episode. Uh, and it, I, I, 
on how depending on how this ends up getting edited, I don't know how much of me reacting to that you're going to end up seeing. But as the episode went on, I definitely stopped caring as much because it started making sense as to why they're making him be so belligerent. Um, the so the Aes Sedai are so revered slash feared by common folk, for lack of a better term, that it takes a long time for them to work up the courage to ask a lot of the questions that they want to ask, and that for the sake of a viewer watching a TV show that has to fit into a much shorter period of time, quite frankly, they need to uh, be asked more quickly. So I think having Rand push back was probably a good way to you know, build that dynamic and start getting some more of that information out. Otherwise, we would be waiting a lot longer for it. Um, it looks like the group is separated, which uh, I'm down for that. I'm, I, I, like, I, I always like it when the Fellowship breaks up and has to go on different adventures, and I'll be interested to see where they go. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, I have some ideas about where everybody's headed next. Uh, and I'm interested to see if they're close to exactly spot on or not at all close to what I thought uh, or what happens in the books or, you know, we'll see. Uh, I got to be honest, I can't, w I, I, I'm literally going to finish this, edit it, get it up on YouTube and then immediately watch episode three because this was fantastic. I really enjoyed the first episode. First episodes of any show are hard, but when you're talking about a world as big as Wheel of Time, Game of Thrones, anything like that, it is hard to pull off a good first episode unless you narrow in on some very specific themes and just let those be the basis of the beginning of your storytelling. And then let all the other themes and, and story and plot points grow out of that. I really feel like this second episode is the be if the first episode is the stem this is the flower just beginning to start to bloom and have petals and each petal is its own aspect of the world they live in and i really like the way they're building up this world um the other thing is it's all we've you know we all know lord of the rings was filled in new zealand but when you watch those movies, you feel like it's the Shire. You feel like it's Mordor. You feel they've. I feel like so far they have achieved this with that. Like, I don't know so much about the actual village of uh, Emmonsfield, but the Two Rivers area in general, it's exactly how I imagined it in my mind, um, and the parts that I didn't imagine, I love that how they did them anyways. Um, the the Brandywine Inn, which I don't think they call it that in the show, but that's the in the the tavern that everybody was hanging out at in the first episode. Loved it, loved it. Um, thought it would thought it was a really great way to to depict it. Um, who throws up a bat? I don't have anything else on that. That's just fucked up. <laughs> uh, oh, Perrin had a wolf come up to him. Not attack a wild wolf, come up to him, not attack him, and lick his wound. What does that mean? We'll have to find out. All right, guys, I think I got everything, at least everything I can think of for this episode. I promise for the next one, I'm going to have a notepad in front of me and I'm going to take notes so I could remember everything I want to cover after the show. In the meanwhile, first and foremost, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed my reaction. I hope even more that you're enjoying the show. Um, I know I really am so far. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It's free and it means the world to me. It really helps me uh, get this out there to more people. On top of that, please leave a comment like you saw at the beginning of this video. I do read through the comments. I'm going to feature people's comments in every single reaction video. Um, and finally, what else do you all want to see me react to? That's the other big thing I want to know. Um, 
I currently am doing Hawkeye, although none of them are edited or uploaded yet. And to be honest, it's because as much as I'm enjoying that show, I'm, I, I really want to get these ones. I'm more interested in watching the rest of the Wheel of Time up to where it's at versus editing the Hawkeye video, so I'm going to get that done first. Uh, but anything else you guys want to see me react to, uh, I, I do watch the Arrowverse shows. Uh, and anything that Marvel puts out, I'm going to be reacting to. But uh, any shows, whether it's new or old, drop it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Uh, until next time, guys, my name is Dan Hoppel. This has been RKO The Mike Reacts. Y'all take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time for The Wheel of Time.